Hey everybody, welcome to Try Our Wilderness. I hope you guys are all doing well today. For those of you that are new to our channel, my name is Tammy Trier, and my family and I have been living 100% off-grid with solar power for a decade. We educate on our lifestyle and uh, share our faith, as well as wilderness survival, homesteading, autism, you name it. Whatever we're doing, we share it with you. And that's why I'm on here today. I do a live video every Wednesday at 10.30 Pacific Standard Time. And today is the day. And I have some fun stuff to show you, some crazy stuff to show you. I'm going to really quickly um, share this video with uh, Facebook. And then I'm actually going to take you guys outside and show you some of the craziness we've been experiencing. So bear with me just one second here while I shoot this over onto Facebook. There we go. And how are you guys doing today? And who is joining me and where are you from? We have had such amazing comments lately from people um, many people have been following and just don't very often comment, so it's really nice to hear from you guys and also to have you interactive. We enjoy hearing from you, we enjoy your input, and that's what these live videos are about. We have an awesome community. Um, I am just the vessel that is starting all this, but we've got a community that's very interactive, very faith-led, and I am truly excited about that. So, now that that is done and that is posted on Facebook, I'm gonna take you guys with me on a little stroll. So, I'm not sure how this is gonna go, but we're gonna try it and see. And uh, worst case scenario, we'll be disconnected and we'll um, jump back on again, but bear with me. We're gonna go outside. Good morning, Miss Shelley. I see comments. I see dogs following behind me. Bear with me here. It's gonna probably hit a dead spot here. That was a little close, wasn't it? Okay, I'm a little bit to get me connected. What triggered us this was the fact that I looked out the window. This is every time. All right, it's spinning. Let's hope that it's going to reconnect here. Let me sit and hope that we reconnect. I see some of you on there. We are spinning like crazy, so hopefully, let's see. Good morning, Miss Tammy. Okay, she's listening from the clothesline, I love it. All right, oh, it's spinning and I don't know if you guys can hear me. Can you guys give me a thumbs up? Can you communicate with me and let me know that you can still see me? I'm gonna try and just make sure we are on. Okay, all right. I don't know how much of that you just saw. Um, I was trying to take you outside to show you some of the crazy stuff that went on this week, but my servers and my routers were not automatically connecting out there. So I don't know if you guys saw that. So communicate with me. Tell me what you just saw or if it was just constantly stuck. And then I'll recap. But we were tremendously blessed this week. Um, we had heavy winds come in Monday. And after the winds, we looked it up to see if there was a tornado. And sure enough, there was a tornado watch in Idaho. And um, this massive tree was uprooted and came down and the mountain man watched it fall. And it actually fell. He thought it landed on our chicken coop. It was because of the debris coming up and bouncing that it looked like it came right through the center of our chicken coop. I walked out later because the winds had died down a little bit and the tree missed. It grazed the chicken coop, but I mean, the, ma the massive trunk of the tree itself, the limbs hit it, but the tree itself missed it. I kid you not by like that much. It went right down a four foot gap between our chicken coop and our, our rabbit hutch. It annihilated and destroyed the run, but the chicken coop is not, um, it's repair very easily repairable. Um, and then I was showing you the solar panels out there. Um, I don't know, did you, were you guys able to see that? Um, I don't know if it was doing too much spinning out there or not, but our solar panels, we have a, a large set of solar panels that turn. And then the other two are stationary there on the ground and they were in the ground. 
and the winds, I looked out the window and saw the sawmill blowing down the track. And then he looked out the bedroom window to see the solar panels laying upside down. The fact that the wind just picked them both up, they are not attached, they are independent, that it just picked them up and flipped them is just a, an absolute miracle because they could have been tumbled across our yard. So it was quite awesome that we've only, only had one panel damaged and nothing else was damaged here. I mean, that tree coming down between those two things, I'll, I'll share a picture in the comments later if I can. It's just, it's crazy. So can you guys, can you guys still hear me? I'm not getting any comments or anything. And I know Miss Tammy's doing her wash. I think that's great that you're listening from the wash line. I was hanging my wash yesterday. Um, but if you guys could let me know that you're hearing me and that I'm not talking to dead space, that would be great. Cause it's so nice to have your inner interactions. Um, so who's out there joining me? So often there are a lot of people joining, um, but you don't comment. And sometimes it's because it won't let you, which I, I have been finding out. But it's nice to have the interaction. So feel free to join me and comment and share where you're from. And if you're watching the replay, do the same. Because it's really nice to uh, get to know you all and have you join in and also uh, get you guys connected with everybody else. Because we really have an awesome group of people here. So, I am drinking my bone broth today, and I want to share that with you because oh so good bone broth is just that. It is so helpful for the gut. I've been having a lot of gut issues. I don't know if that's part of something that's going around, but the Mountain Boy and I have just been having really um, just it's just weird. It's a weird feeling and we're both experiencing the same thing. So I've been trying to um, divert my stomach issues with the bone broth and just give my stomach a break, uh, give my digestive system a break. And their, their broth is just tremendous, very healing. And you can find it by going to treyerwilderness.com slash bone broth, one word. Um, links down below in the description. And I have quite a few other links down there today too. Right now, I don't know about you guys, but we are using our time very wisely. Um, being under lockdown has really not changed things for us. You know, oftentimes people are like, gosh, aren't you guys bored back there? I don't know what that is. Seriously, I don't know what that is. We wake up in the morning, our feet hit the floor, and we are constant go, go, go all day long. We eat dinner and sometimes we just go right to bed and crash. Other times we, I try to relax a little bit before I go to bed, but it's constant. We're always doing stuff. And right now um, we are busy working on two, at two locations really. And uh, it's just been a really amazing and exciting time to see everything unfolding and to see God's blessings on us. Uh, it's just constant and tremendous. So I'm very excited about that. And we will be sharing so much more with you guys. There's going to be a new playlist added on our YouTube channel for our new off-grid tiny cabin build. It's going to be a log cabin. And um, we are really stepping back in time, um, detaching even more uh, from modern day conveniences. You know, right now there's propane here um, on the... On the uh, old homestead it's so weird because we're still here so it just and i refer to it as our place but it's really not we're caretaking this right now and it's it's awesome so i was very thankful with the destruction that could have been that it wasn't for the new um home homeowner but we've just got so much going on and we're gonna do um detach and we won't be using as many things as we're even using now, even though we're still living very traditionally. Um, gravity feeding water, uh, traditionally heating water, um, wood cook stove. I mean, I cook on my wood stove all the time, but we will have a wood cook stove that will be heating our home and also providing um, for me to cook and make our meals as well as baking. So I'm super excited about that. And just so many other aspects of what we're doing 
on our new homestead will be really educational. So we are already in the process. We have, I've, I've got way too many videos to edit, but we've been really documenting everything we're doing and we will share the entire journey with the world, with you guys, and there'll be something in it for everybody to learn. Um, yesterday, I had a breaking moment and I went outside and I uh, transplanted all of my flowers. And so I took some and left some and also my herbal plants. So I got those moved up to the new property. And just, a, just another way God has blessed us. All these years here, we've been here a decade, I've been planting things and they just didn't seem to take. We have very uh, soil that's really full of clay. So it is harder for things to uh, produce here without nurturing the soil. And um, last year, everything bloomed. It was such a blessing right before we sold everything. And some people be like, oh, that's so disappointing. You, everything finally bloomed and now you're moving. It was just a good blessing to me to be able to see it and that they did bloom and that now I can, I can share them and have some. So it's all perspective. You hear me say that every week and it is truly all perspective. But so I got to do that and that is very fulfilling to me. I had to find a spot that would not get trashed while we are uprooting things. I mean, we pretty much have uprooted everything we're going to uproot at this point and, and are leveling things out now. At this moment, we are waiting for things to dry. It is crazy wet. So it's Kind of disappointing, but we had to revamp things anyway and come back here to work on things here. So we will have some time here getting some things accomplished. I've been packing. I am down to a Rubbermaid tote with just the clothes I need for seven days. I've got two pairs of shoes and I am simplifying and I love it. Do you know how easy it is to get out of the shower and grab a pair of jeans and a t-shirt and go and a, and a jacket or sh extra shirt just to, for, you know, layers? It's so simple and it's, I, I gotta put it into place moving forward because it just gives you one last thing to think about and I am absolutely loving it. Getting things packed up though and, and ready to roll, our hope is that we can just take things from here and put it right in place, but it will be a while. We've got a lot of construction to do. So it'll be quite, quite the process. The mountain man and I will be milling a lot of lumber and building on our own, because it's looking like the um, lockdown is lifting. How many of you are back to, I won't say normal, but you're no longer under the tight restrictions that you were. Many of the states are opening up. I know Montana did uh, last week already. Um, May 1st, sounds like Idaho is going to be as well. I know Georgia, things were lifted, I think yesterday. So things are starting to change. It's yet to be seen if that will be a positive or a negative. Um, but, you know, we roll with the change. Um, but what are, what are things like for you guys? I can't, yeah, no messages are coming through. So I might have like knocked that out when I went outside. So what a bummer. Um, if you guys are messaging and I'm not seeing it, I will respond afterwards after the fact. Let me actually look on here and see if by chance that is what's happening. That would be a bummer, but let me just see. Oh yes, you guys are messaging, I can see it. Okay, so thank you, Miss Mill. She can hear me fine, and you were lucky with all the possible destruction that could have happened, Shelly said, absolutely. Absolutely, that was just insanity. Colorado under communist rule, no openings here, lol. <laughs> I hear you, Mill. I hear you. And I know Canada is pretty tight right now, too. Um, so it's, you know, it's yet to be seen what's going to happen here. Um, this thing is mutated. There's varying streams of it. Uh, there's uh, second rounds. Um, it's going to be hard to to tell what's going to come of this. We may end up locked down again. Things may just suddenly 
disappear and go away. It's gonna be hard to tell. But just be safe out there. Be mindful of your surroundings. Be mindful of what's happening, you know, in our country and, and in your state and even at a local level, you know. I don't know. There's just lots of things to be thought about in regard to this whole scenario. So I'm glad you guys can hear me and I'm also glad I can see your comments now. I went through my clothes last year and kept only basically a week's worth of clothes, Shelly said. That's so awesome. I still am torn because there are times that I need to go out for business, so I do keep my nicer things. And not that I couldn't wear my nicer things here on the homestead. I did actually keep some of my nicer shirts out. Um, but of course, they've got like a pool in them or something, you know. Our clothes get covered in tree sap. They easily get caught on stuff and get ripped. I mean, it's just, it's constant. So I try to keep nice clothes and work clothes. And I think moving forward, most of my clothes are going to become work clothes because what I have out right now is going to end up annihilated till we're done with this build, I'm sure of it. But it's okay. It's all part of the process. And I'm, I'm just th thankful for the simplicity. Moving, I follow a fellow on, um, or have watched a couple of his videos on YouTube. I can't even think of a name right now. But he wears all black t-shirts and jeans. And that's how he minimized things because they go with everything and they can be dressed up or dressed down. It, it, it makes life so simple. I mean, that's why I think I loved living in the wall tent before so much because everything was so simplified. And moving forward in our new home, everything is going to be simplified there too because we won't have the room for excess. So as we get in place up there, I will be gifting and probably gifting more than selling just because I'm feeling God putting it on my heart to just give it away. And that's refreshing too. So it makes it so nice. I have to tell you, it's so funny watching myself on a video because my hands are flying. I'm too animated. I just, yes, it's just way too funny to watch. <laughs> How you guys keep up, I don't know. Shelly says, we are still closed up here in Canada. They are talking about opening, but it does not look like it will happen for a while. Tammy says, it was nice to be able to go to the thrift store. I had many who grew and needed clothes. Yeah, it's nice to get out. It's nice to get out and not have to worry so much. Um, I, you know, I know with Montana, they're still trying to keep that six foot distance. My girlfriend from Michigan was telling me that in their grocery stores, they actually had one way aisles. So they were all going the same direction so that people weren't passing each other. That was really good thinking, you know, Idaho didn't do that. And Idaho, I mean, parts of Idaho, we've had to do a couple errands that have taken us to different places. And, you know, we've been very cautious trying not to be around more people than necessary. And, you know, you go from town to town and it's interesting. Our local town doesn't seem very affected by it. Like it's still very busy where, and there are some businesses that were closed. Um, our big businesses are two grocery stores. So I guess that may be why it looks so busy, but nevertheless, we got to the bigger city and it wasn't near as jam packed, which was good to see that people are really, you know, honoring things. Um, our county was very blessed to not have any incidents. So that was great. The county next to us had 54, I think. So, you know, it's just being cautious, being safe. I have a question for you guys. What have you learned through this? What have you gained through this? What have you changed through this? Those are some good questions, and I would love your answers, both those that are watching now live and those that watch the replay, because everything we experience in life should be learning lessons. And, you know, for us, I'm really happy to say there wasn't much that we learned through this, and there wasn't much that we needed to change. Our minds were in the right place, but we just didn't have the funding at the time to previously to keep doing what our minds know was best. But now we're, we are in a little bit of a different place. Um, our funding is still guarded because um, we are limited on what we have to build. So we are being very cautious and um, not 
diving in and, and spending a lot of money. But there were areas because of our financial situation that we did need to stock up on, mainly our food area. Um, but that's pretty much where we are. But because of our lifestyle, we were already there. We were already, this is what we, this is the kind of stuff that we were preparing for. This is the kind of stuff that we were trying to teach everyone else to prepare for. It's these unexpected events, these unexpected events where um, we are left to fend for ourselves and be self-reliant. And, you know, the point of my questioning is to get you thinking, if you haven't been, what you should be, um, be, con be concerned with uh, moving forward and what things that you should be altering so that if, God forbid, we ever end up in another situation like this or this revamps itself, that we're ready. And of course, financial situations are one of the biggest things that keep us from being able to um, do everything that we want to do. But there are ways to attain that. And that's what today's topic was about, is learning to be frugal. Because last week I mentioned about the financial struggles, but I didn't key in on, you know, when you're in that place, how do you keep thriving? You know, you can't, you don't have the money to purchase the things you need. How do you keep going? Well, one way is that you learn to need less. That is key is learning to make do with what you have and be happy and content with it. And in some situations, learning how to um, replace the things you needed with things that you can ultimately make on your own. So that is what we're gonna talk about today. I just, I'm forgetting that they're not scrolling here. So let's see here. Mill says we call the living smarter, not harder. We're working in that same direction. Yes, exactly. Exactly. You know, like with our bill, just for example, um, in regard to Mill's response of living smarter and not harder, we are making every effort not to have to do anything twice. So hence, I'm packing, but I'm not going to move it to a storage unit or move it to another container or, you know, we already have the storage shed. I am putting things in there, but I'm not, I'm not gonna uproot what's in our storage shed until we have a place in place at our new property and then just move everything at one time. So we are making great effort to work very efficiently with the time we have. And that's important in all aspects. And the same applies, you know, to being frugal, when you learn to be frugal and you cut down on your efforts, even just something as simple as lighting, you know, when you're in a financial struggle, having all the lights on in the house and everything playing for background noise and, and just being over excessive with your, with your usage isn't helping you. So when you learn to be frugal, even with something like that and cut your electric bill, you can either use that money elsewhere or not have to worry about your electric being shut off. For us, that wasn't a concern because we're off grid and we use solar, but we are very minimalistic. We have all of our lights in this house. Each light is on its own switch so that we are not using more lights in this house at one time than we need to. That's how our minds work. And that's how yours should work too in a situation where financial struggles hit. There are so many ways that we can cut down. Water usage, you know, those of you that are on the water, on public water and you are paying for your water, you probably don't realize how much you're wasting. I Come visit me for a day and I'll show you because we are limited on our water because we limit ourselves. We have a 275 gallon tank downstairs that we fill with our well pump on demand when the sun is shining or when the generator is running. 
And we are mindful of that because if too many gray days set in, if something breaks on our system, if our generator's out of fuel, whatever, we are mindful of that and also make sure that that is full at all times as well so that if something does happen, we have plenty of water on hand right away accessible to us. It's just, it's just how the mind, our minds work. And, and it's what I want to teach you guys to do because that's a step in the right direction for preparedness in that you are constantly thinking how you can better be prepared, how you can be frugal, how you can be knowledgeable and just keep going like that. And as you look at that on a regular basis and that's your natural mind, your natural thinking, you will escalate to such a place of um, preparedness that it's second nature and that's what you want. Um, Shelly says, everyone's personal bubble will be quite a bit larger now. Yesterday there was a person who was closer than six feet they recommend and I was not comfortable. Yeah, I get that. And you know what, for me, I am a hugger and, and uh, you know, it's just really weird. Also, when you meet new people, you know, I'm a handshaker. So it's like, um, I had to go to get um, something in town and um, one of our friends was just joking and said that, um, let's do an elbow bump or a butt bump. And I was comfortable with the elbow bump, it was a guy. So anyway. If that was my husband, that's a different story. But you know what I'm saying. But it was just funny to me. Um, but yes, I get that, Shelly. Mill says, I've been pretty conscious about the distance thing, literally stepping forward or back to give folks room to pass. Yeah, we've been doing the same thing. Um, we've had to make a couple trips out and you know to the post office and um, to pick up packages. And yeah, you know, you wanna be careful because you don't know. And right now, people are not minding the lockdown. We have people coming into our area from Washington, New York, Oregon. I mean, there's all these out of state plates. So people are coming in with their campers and doing recreational things. And that's great, but they're coming into our towns, into our stores, into our area, and who knows if they're carrying it or not or whatever. So, you know, it, it unfortunately, not everybody operates the same. So we just have to take those precautions ourselves and just be careful. When I am out, I'm like using my um, thieves oil, like nonstop, constant, because you know, we're in places where we can't always wash our hands, so I am just killing the bacteria constant. I, I'm just using the straight oil. I'm not even, the hand sanitizer burns my hands, and I don't like to use it more than I have to, and I don't even use regular. I use a thieves-based um, hand sanitizer. So anyway, precautions are important. Um, let's see here. Oh, Miss Millie's on here. Hello, lovely. We realize we need to focus more on our homestead. Yeah, I mean, I totally get that for us. You know, our first thoughts were, oh man, we don't have our chickens, we don't have our goats, you know. Even the horse would have been nice, you know, in the event that we needed to conserve on fuel. And how about those fuel prices right now? I'm praising God for that. That helps greatly in our efforts to be frugal. Um, but yeah, I totally get that. You know, um, my girlfriend in Michigan mentioned that, you know, she grew um, relaxed in her homesteading efforts. And it wasn't until this that she realized how relaxed she had become. And still, I mean, the woman is an insane gardener. She does a lot. But, you know, we all, we all start to pay attention and become more mindful of things when we go through stuff like this. Um, let me see here. And Millie is reminding me because she left a comment. I want to give a huge shout out to her. Not only is she my hero in many ways, um, we are amazingly good friends, but her books and what she is doing right now is so phenomenal to me. Um, if you have not read any of Millie's books, you need to go to treyerwilderness.com slash Millie Copper. She has two series out right now, and they are both absolutely phenomenal. And we'll just
just, you will get stuck in her books and be craving the next one as soon as you finish the one you're reading. And I encourage you to get in there and dive into her books because her books are walking through a similar scenario and give you a lot of uh, food for thought. Some you may have already experienced, but I highly encourage you um, to check out her book series. And also, for those of you that are out in your garden, at your wash line, and wanting to multitask in certain ways, Millie just came out with her first audiobook. So you can find that by going to tryyourwilderness.com slash Millie Copper Audio. If you do not have an Audible account, when you take and join the free trial right now, you can get Millie's book for free. Um, depending on if you have an account and you haven't used it for a while, you may be able to do the same thing. And I believe you also get a discount on it um, if you are a current member. So go there and check it out. But it's really awesome. I love, I, I've had the privilege to listen to it. The Mountain Boy has been listening to it. And I have always loved audiobooks because I like reading because you get a visual and you, you paint your own picture. But with the audiobooks, you do the same thing, um, just in a different way. It brings it to life a little different. So if you were out in your garden and you were looking for something to listen to, I hands down recommend Millie's books. Her books, she might be a great friend, but if I didn't know Millie, I'd be recommending her books just the same. She is a phenomenal writer, and many of you I know on here are listening to or reading her books, and I know you will say the same. So go check those out, spread the word, um, because she is on a roll and has a lot more coming your way. So in addition to that, Millie says, I'm short meat supplies. We lost two freezers at the same time and found them too late. That's been our biggest hole. Oh man, that's a huge expense and just horrible. There is nothing worse than that when you find a freezer that has uh, started to thaw and your meat is tainted. That's just horrible. So I'm so sorry that you had to experience that. And again, that's, you know, you were stocked. You had the right mindset. We just run into situations like this. So if there's ways to learn from those those situations, learn from them. If, if, if not, that's one of those moments where we just need to kind of keep rolling with the punches. It's very unfortunate. And, and I feel your pain on that, Mel. That's horrible. Shelly says they have the arrows in our grocery stores also. They also have six foot markers for the lineups. They have dividers up. Yeah, the dividers are up in our stores, but we don't have any of the aisle um, guidelines. They are limiting certain stores to a certain number of people. Um, and people seem to be pretty mindful of the six foot limit when they're in the grocery stores and stuff, which I'm thankful for also. But I, I'm I'm excited and, and, and glad to see that other some people are really taking the effort to go the extra mile. Miss Mona says, we are good during this time. I recognize that shirt. Yes, I love my denim and I love my, my line denims. They are just so nice. I love them, I love them. So thank you, thank you, Miss Mona. And Millie says, when we went from a small solar system to connect it to the grid, the noise increase really bothered me. I had no idea a fridge could be so loud. And yes, on the water. Yeah, you know, I cannot be around EMFs at all. Our house runs so clean and it's just amazing for, and I realize and I'm, I'm noticing that the mountain man has problems with it too. When we run out to town, we are both so drained and so totally exhausted from a two hour trip to town. It's as if we worked a 12 hour day of grueling hard work. I mean, we are just totally zapped. And I know for me, I know what it's from. It's the toxins and it's the EMFs. But when I am in a place where there is heavy power lines, 
I can feel the pool of that. I can feel the draw of that. And it's just, it, it makes me sick. I will never ever go back to grid power. And I am so thankful for our off-grid power. I don't know what our winter's gonna be like because our funds are very tight. And we are, I mean, just, it's, they're so tight that we are just gonna get under roof. And we will probably have to go without a lot of things because we refuse to go back into debt. So power this year may be one of those things. We will have our generator, um, but as far as solar power goes, I'm not sure what we will, what we will uh, be walking out with that. So it'll be interesting to see how God blesses us because he has been blessing us tremendously. And I mean tremendously. It's just, it's amazing. Um, I have to share this with you guys. And I don't think Kelly's on here. Miss Kelly shared and is gifting us with a cook stove. And we are so elated and so excited about this cook stove. But we're not sure with everything going on if we're going to be able to make the trip to get it and we weren't sure on that and we had a logging crew come back here and they are logging a parcel near ours uh clear cutting it and it has actually been a blessing i hate to see trees go but there was a lot of diseased and dead trees in there and that would have spread for one two it has opened up a complete different view for us which is beyond amazing and this was not something that was expected but in talking to the loggers the father was present the one day and I said about us going to use a wood cook stove and he asked if we had it and I said well not yet we haven't I said a friend of mine in Montana has gifted us with one but I'm not sure if and when we'll be able to get there to pick it up so he said, well, I want to check on something and I'll get back to you. My neighbor has one and had intended to use it and she is not and is looking to get rid of it. So Friday we get contacted and um, they sent us pictures. This thing is beautiful. It is a monarch stove, which I believe is, it looks, it's really crazy. It is identical to the one that Kelly is gifting us with. Only the one that Kelly is gifting has a back splash of about this much. This one has a full back splash with a uh, cooling rack up top and it looks like it's brand new. I mean it is unscathed and they contacted us and it was a blessing because we don't know, we didn't know what we would be able to do and this gives us reassurance that we will have heat for the winter. So I asked how much she wanted for it. And this woman's in her uh, mid to late 70s. And because we are intending to use this thing and actually cook on it, and, and she knows it's going to go to a home that somebody is going to appreciate it, she is gifting it to us. I just cried. I'm so excited. God is just providing every little detail, and it has just been tremendous. I think I told you guys about the tub. We went and looked at the sinks on Friday, and sure enough, um, one of them was unscathed, just out in a trash pile. So we claimed that, and we're gifted that. We've been gifted windows. Um, it's just tremendous. God is just giving us everything we need, and the things that we do need to pay for, we are getting very, very inexpensively. So. I have no doubt that we will be well set up for winter, and that's just my faith and trust in God. So keep that. That is one very important factor in all of this is always, always, always trust God with whatever's happening around you and seek him for guidance and direction, always. So let me see here. Um, and yes, uh, Millie, on a fridge, it's crazy. When I'm in other people's homes or in other places and I hear sounds, it's like, oh my, they're so intensified because my refrigerator is propane. So I don't really hear anything. So I totally get that. I totally get that. Um, Shelly says, while renovating, I repurposed a shelving unit and dresser by painting it and now have finished most of it with very little cost. And she shared pictures with me. If you can share pictures below, Shelly, go for it because it's simple repurposing and doing things like that that make things so nice. And that is a frugal approach to getting what we need and, and finding ways 
to utilize what we have. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, Shelly said, last week cucumbers were on sale and I bought a couple to dehydrate. I want to see what they are like rehydrated for use in the winter. That's an awesome, awesome idea because the other thing is too, pickles. We, we have so many jars of pickles downstairs because a year ago we did, I can't tell you how many batches, and we did lime pickles, dill pickles, and a combination of the two. And they are just tremendous and they are great. Like this week I did a roast on the wood stove during the night and then the next day I uh, shredded that up and added mayonnaise, pickles, um, eggs, hard-boiled eggs, salt and pepper, garlic, and made a salad uh, just for sandwiches. So there's so much you can do by utilizing things that are accessible to us and that are on sale by dehydrating, freeze drying, canning, preserving, and utilizing later. That is one heck of a way to be frugal, as well as planting your own garden. Um, oh, Millie says, you're so very sweet. I love you, girl. You're doing an awesome job and you are truly my hero in many ways. Tammy said, that is incredible. And I am thinking you mean the stove. I'm not sure, because I wasn't checking the time on that. But yes, God is blessing us so, so tremendously. It's just amazing. I feel, I feel so very held by God right now. It's just amazing. So I want to encourage you guys to think of how you can be more frugal in this situation. You know, um, there are services available to us. I talked about that last week as far as bankruptcy. Right now, there are all kinds of different services and funding available for everyone that is going through this, for businesses, for individuals. So um, it's important that we know what's available to us, but it's also important that we form habits of learning how to be more frugal because on the other side of this, do you realize how much money you can save if you change how you view things? You know, so many people, like I've said so many times, we live in a throwaway society. So when something breaks, everybody throws it away. This household does not do that. Unless it is some kind of cheap piece of garbage, that somehow we had anyway, because most of our stuff is antiques. And those antiques, it's very rare that they break. And if they do, we find ways to fix them because they are so useful and so much more sturdy than anything we could find today. But additionally, we keep things because oftentimes we can repurpose things. I've told you before how the mountain man took our lawnmower handle that had the um, piece to engage the mower and he used that on his sawmill so that he had an extension and a way to be back further from the blade to be able to have a better view of the blade and things going on more so than right up on top of it. And the ability to turn on and off the blade with the handle from the mower. I am blessed to have a man who has such a mechanical mind and sees things I'm going to say in pictures rather than any other way. He is able to just quickly determine what needs to be done to make things work. It's just, it's a genius mind. I love it. I'm blessed by it. And I'm so thankful for it. And it's going to really come in handy with our future build. I'm really, ex I'm just so excited about that. By the way, we have been, we have, we are set at 16 feet by 18 feet with a six foot by eight foot addition on the back, which will be our pantry, herbal pantry, um, washroom, freezer room, utility room, place for extra stuff that doesn't fit in the house. And then we will also have storage. So separate storage building. So it's just awesome. I'm excited. It's going to be very small. I mean, it's really crazy because we are mapping out our space in our home that is 30 by 36 and have, you know, figured out how things are going to sit and lay in the home. Our cabin down below is an exterior dimension of 15 by 20. So what we are building is in essence smaller than, than that, or about, about that, I guess is what I should say. But I'm excited, I'm so excited. So 
Okay, she said, yeah, Tammy said yes on the stove. And Shelly said, that is so wonderful that you now have a wood cook stove. I know. And Kelly has still offered hers so that we can use it in our outdoor kitchen in the future, which will be awesome because what we are going to do is create an outdoor kitchen so that our house doesn't get too hot, but I can can using the wood cook stove. So it'll be awesome. It'll be a sweat box. I can lose weight while I'm canning. I can remove toxins while I'm canning and it's outside so I can have a breeze as well. So it's just going to be awesome. I am just so stoked about everything that is happening. So really, really awesome stuff. I want to mention a couple things to you guys. You guys are all right? No, I'll cut my leg off with James off. I see. Distress. <laughs> Got it all trimmed up. No, <laughs> no, but I, I don't, I can't get a hold of Rich. I don't know what size he wants in the mold to cut. Oh. And I should almost have him cut so I can get him out of the way a little bit. Okay, I'm going to have to ask him that in a little bit. I shouldn't be on too much longer, and then I can um, ask him and let you know. Okay. Okay. Trying to get it almost at a standstill then. Well, let me, I can quick. Well, I'm going to do that Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, he's limbing up that big tree that fell. It's, it was crazy. Thankfully the trees here are very tall and that particular type of tree was a lodgepole. So a lot of its branches are up higher. So it's not like the whole tree is riddled with them, but it's a project. It was a project. So what I wanted to share with you is that the Herbal Academy has had discounts on their herbal classes. I want to encourage you guys to look into those. They have, their website is a wealth of information. And if you are looking to gain herbal knowledge, that is the place to do it. I have taken several of their classes. My goal in the future is to take all of their classes. I really want to enhance my herbal knowledge and also possibly utilize it as um, something other than just for our family. So you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash herbal academy to get information on that. You can find a link for that below. Um, I shared with you Millie's information. Be sure to check them out. Her audio book is Havoc in Wyoming and then um, that is the first book available on audio and then the whole series up to book five, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, is available um, on Amazon uh, in the links below. And she has just come out with another new series, which I think is a great series. Um, I am drawing a blank right now, Millie, so if you want to share the name of the series down below, um, it's coming to me, but in pieces. But anyway, this new series I think is really great for those of you that are watching that when the coronavirus and the lockdowns hit, you were in shock and didn't think that something like that could happen in, in the United States, that it could happen in your small town, and that, um, thing, that we were in a situation where we, were, we had a threat. If that is you, you want to read this book. And, and, and I think it will, you will relate to it a lot. This series is a little different than the other series, but they are both extremely valuable books to read, to gain insight and to inspire your thoughts on preparedness. So definitely check those out. TreyerWilderness.com slash Millie Copper. TreyerWilderness.com slash Millie Copper Audio. Um, the Family Garden Plan is a book by my dear friend, Melissa K. Norris, and I highly recommend that for your physical library. It is a soup to nuts on gardening, and you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash family garden plan, and that's down below also. And she has an organic gardening workshop that is, she, she's amazing. Um, she is a very good teacher and uh, puts things in layman's terms, explains things in great detail, and walks you through everything. And you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash organic gardening workshop, and that's down below. Also guys, if you are dealing um, with health issues, maybe that you can't determine through our medical system, um, our, 
I don't have lots of positive things about our medical system. Um, it does have its place. But if you are also looking to just fine tune your health, uh, do a, a check to see where you're at and to just kind of monitor it. Um, either way, you can go to creatingbalancedhealth.com and in doing so, um, they have partnered with us. I utilize their services for my healing and you can use discount code Trayer Wilderness at checkout and get a discount on their scans and the different things that they offer. I highly encourage you to check into their services. They are fantastic and a great way to be uh, proactive in our own health. So check them out. And also, I want to mention about um, something that I utilize also for my health. I had a call coming through. Hopefully, you can still hear me. It says I'm live. Okay. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I did was I retrained my brain through my healing process. I was stuck in a fight and flight loop, or my brain was. And it was thinking it was sick and still holding on to some of the things that really... Um, weren't a problem in my system anymore. So I basically reset my system and got rid of some of the symptoms and the struggles I was having as a result of it. Retraining the brain is, our brains and our, and our tissue are amazing and trainable parts of our body. So if you are dealing with chronic illnesses, chronic pain, um, MSC, which is multiple chemical sensitivities, um, POTS, uh, IBS, chronic fatigue syndrome, um, EHS, which, which is electric hypersensitivity syndrome, Lyme disease, fibromyalgia, anxiety, depression, PTSD, um, breast implant illness, as well as different food sensitivities. You can utilize uh, retraining your brain to help remove these struggles from your life. And trust me, I, we were awed at the immediate, and I mean immediate, um, abilities in retraining the brain. So you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash retraining the brain and get more information on that. But I feel it's really important for me to mention these things. I haven't mentioned either of them in a while. And um, these are things that we can learn to do to help ourselves. Um, one, with being proactive in our health, and two, being able to heal things that people say are not able to be healed. We have those abilities. Our bodies have those abilities. We just need to learn how to do such things. So I wanted to share that today. So definitely check that out. Um, also, I've shared our progress. We've got a lot of progress going on. We, are, we got 10 loads of stone in um, total, and now we wait to get the other 10 loads of stone in. So hopefully uh, in the next week or two, it'll dry out enough that we can get more stone in place, and then we will start revamping our uh, efforts up there again and uh, finish up here. So it'll be a process, but there's always progress. There's always setbacks. There's always things. So just keep moving forward. That's why we are doing this every week and faithfully moving forward. So I want to read some things to you today. Ah, Millie said, it's a side story set in the same world as Havoc in Wyoming. It's about ordinary people who find themselves in a suddenly changed world. The first book is Havoc Begins. Thank you. And it it's a great sideline and it's a great different perspective, I believe, um, from the Havoc in Wyoming. And I really like how she is pulling them, the two together and has created the two different storylines. It's just, it's awesome. That's what I'm saying. She's my hero. She has opened my eyes in a lot of different ways. So I wanted to read some stuff today because the other aspect of things today that I wanted to talk about is in training. I want you to look at life as though we are constantly in training, whether it is to learn from our current experiences here and learning how to be more prepared, learning how 
to be more frugal, learning how to adjust to change, learning how to keep our perspectives where they need to be, learning how to keep our eyes on Jesus. So with that being said, I want to read some stuff to you today. Okay, so Hebrews 12, 8. The trouble is your, the trouble you're in isn't punishment, it's training. The Hebrew verb for test comes from a word that means to take a keen look at, to look, to choose. Dismiss the notion that God does not see your struggle. On the contrary, he is fully engaged. He sees the needs of tomorrow and accordingly uses your circumstances to create the test of today. Does he not have the authority to do so? He is the potter, we are the clay. He is the shepherd, and we are the sheep. He is the gardener, we are the branches. He is the teacher, we are the students. Trust his training. You will go through this and get through this. And remember, all tests are temporary. They are limited in duration. The Bible says, in all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. 1 Peter 1.6 and here's something else to keep in mind. You can't shorten your testing period, but you can definitely lengthen it by being too proud or stubborn and resisting what God wants to teach you. This is so very true. We rebel. We don't like to be taught. We don't like to be shown things sometimes. God won't deny you that choice, but neither will he protect you from the consequences of that choice. We have free will, guys. So when God is teaching, I highly encourage that you have an open mind and are very open-minded to the Holy Spirit to be willing to learn through these lessons. You wouldn't be the first student who had to repeat a grade in school and you won't be the last. You can go to church on Sunday and play lip service to God's word and you can reject the principles of truth and seek the easy way out, but it doesn't work. God, uh, good, I'm sorry, good understanding gains favor, but the way of the unfaithful is hard. Proverbs 13, 15. Do it, do it God's way for that's the best way, always. So we've been talking about God's timing. If you listen to my podcast this past week, it was specifically on God's timing versus our timing. And this is so true. You know, I could look back and say these last four years were absolutely dreadful and try to list off all the ugly things that happened because quite honestly, without looking in my journal sometimes, I actually dismiss them because I am so focused on the gratitude and the good in my life and the good that has come from it. I don't want to change any of it. Everything I have had to walk through in my life that has been hard has made me who I am and I am happy with who I am becoming. I can't take credit for that though. I give God all the glory. He is molding me. He is the potter. I am the clay and I am relinquishing my hold on that. I like what he's doing. I like what he, where he is leading us. I like what, what his will is for my life over mine. And when you get to that place, that's when you learn. And and we learn through the process. We take baby steps of learning. Sometimes we are more stubborn. Sometimes we are more prideful and we, we miss the lesson. So sometimes we have to redo the lesson. And that's, you know, that's okay. Sometimes through that process, we even learn more. But be open to what God is teaching and learn through these moments that we are walking out Learn first and foremost that through this, we should be seeking God for direction and guidance and always be leaning on him that no matter how prepared we get without him, we are not prepared. You've got to know that. That is the key thing in my, in my book and in my view is that without God, no matter how prepared we think we are, we're not even close. You have him leading the way and you will be well prepared. I truly believe that. I truly believe that because he will take care of us. And when we seek him and put him first, that is his promise. So remember that. But learn from your trials. Be open-minded. Now, here's something else that goes with this. <clears throat> it's called Don't Give Up, Keep Going. 
Isaiah 57, 18, I have seen what they do, but I will heal them anyway. Are you asking, is it too late for God to do something with me? Is it, it's never too late for God. In scripture, we read about broken people. God raised up in marvelous ways. He used Moses, a murderer, to deliver the Hebrew slaves. He used Jacob, a liar and a trickster, to fulfill his promise to Abraham. He even included Rahab, a harlot, in the uh, messianic family line. And if God redeemed them, he can redeem you too. Brokenness should never keep you bound. Rather, it should release you into a life of freedom. A truly broken person understands the reality of John 15, 5, where Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. A broken person who has learned to depend on God is a force to be reckoned with. I love that. When you're looking at a past strewn with failures, it's difficult to see a bright future, just as it's difficult to drive when you're looking in the rearview mirror. You need to glance in your rearview mirror occasionally, but if you keep focusing on it, you'll end up hurting yourself and others. That's why the windshield is so much bigger than the rearview mirror. It shows you where you're headed instead of where you've been. It's a powerful statement. That's why we're moving faithfully forward, guys. It's exactly why we're moving faithfully forward. When you turn to God, he will forgive you, restore you, and use you for his purposes. He said, I have seen what they do, but I will heal them anyway. I will lead them. I will comfort those who mourn, bringing words of praise to their lips. That's Isaiah 57, 18, and 19. The word for you today is, it's never too late for God. I share that today because I believe through this that many people have rekindled their faith, have gained a little bit more of a direction towards God. I believe that those that have maybe been denying or don't believe in God have maybe been thinking a little bit more about what he promises and what he offers. And I shared this today because if you're out there and you feel that your past is something that could never ever be forgiven, you're so very wrong. The thing that God offers me is the same thing that he has offered you. It isn't, it's, it's not that he hasn't offered it, it's that you haven't accepted it. Because when he died on the cross for our sins and our, our mistakes, it was put out there openly to every human being on this planet. The same offer to me is for you. And all, all you have to do is just like I did, is accept it and accept him into your heart and, and ask for forgiveness of the things you've done and make a great effort moving forward to walk out life as per his word and, and try to be sinless. It's hard. We all sin and it's, it's, we, it's our nature. So don't be discouraged when you slip up and you make a mistake. Just keep seeking him and keep asking him for forgiveness and keep trying harder and you you know someone mentioned on my um mountain woman radio uh that sh is shared on youtube this week that they wished that they had faith like mine and i was very humbled and honored that they are um taken by my faith but at the same time i made it a point to share with them that what i have is accessible to them too it takes time and effort and energy and making it a habit and constantly seeking God to grow our faith and our trust muscles. It takes walking out hard times to, to help us to realize that the more we pull into him, the more his promises prevail and that the miracles abound and that he does answer his promises and he, his word is true. And the more we seek him, and trust in him, the more our faith muscles will grow. I didn't get here overnight. This has been a process, a 50-year process. And I am very thankful for what God has done in my life. I am grateful for where he has brought me. And I'm grateful that he has given me the strength to keep seeking him. And, and it's important for us all to share that with people and let them know. And my prayer is that if you have recently come to God and have... Uh, re rekindled a past relationship, have started a new one, please make it a habit. Seek him daily and 
And when this all blows over, keep seeking him. Don't lose face. Don't get um, uh, uh, lax, just like you did in your preparedness efforts. Don't get lax with God. Keep seeking him and you will continue to grow your faith muscles and it will be absolutely amazing. And I want you to remember the words in this today that we, um, that this is why the windshield is so much bigger than the rear view mirror. It shows you where you're headed instead of where you've been. Keep moving faithfully forward and I promise you, God will do amazing things in your life. I promise you. And I, I hope and pray that you continue to follow us on this journey and see just how God blesses because I can't take credit for anything that is happening right now. I'm giving him all the glory because it has just been so incredibly amazing what he's doing in our lives. And I hope you guys can see it. <laughs> Millie said, amen. God is good. And, and we need to learn from everything that we walk out in our lives, allow the experiences we walk through to grow us and to strengthen us and to build our faith and our trust muscles, but also our obedience muscles. Listen to the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit guides you, even if it's something that's extremely uncomfortable, do it. God had guided us so many times through our four-year journey when we had nothing. And what little we had, he prompted us to gift. We are called to tithe. And when we tithe, it is part of our obedience to God. And God continues to bless. And I, I tell you guys, that's just an example. We tithe the last pennies we had, even when we needed it for something. And Every time we did that, we were gifted what we needed to keep going and to pay what needed to be paid or to purchase what needed to be purchased. Obedience, faith, and trust. Seeking him are the key things for a life of wholesome abundance. I promise you. <laughs> I promise you. That is what I've learned and it has served us well and I know you see it. That tree came down, how it cleared that. I will share a picture later or check out our my Facebook page where I shared the pictures the other day. The solar panels did not get swept across Idaho. They flipped in my yard and they flipped right where they were. There was so much junk right there that they could have flipped into. The truck was right there, the backhoe was right there. There were six by six posts right there and it picked them up and just flipped them right where they were. It just blows me away. So all that being said, you guys have been joining me for a long time today. I hope that this has been helpful to you. Learn to be frugal in every aspect of your life, both from what you wear and what you have in your wardrobe to how much water and how much power you use and utilizing what you have instead of feeling like you need to buy more. And, and when, you, when you do need something, this is how I do it. When I need something, I go to the thrift store or I go to an antique store and find something that's very inexpensive that will serve my purpose, that will last me a long time. You know, in my, in my cupboard where I have all my dishes, I've had many guests here who have had to apologize because a cup got broken or a dish got broken. You know what, that's why I have the things I have. I have found treasures that make me happy when I use them and I use them all the time. And when they break, I can replace them for $1.95 or 50 cents and get something else that gives me great pleasure and, and utilize it till it breaks and, and keep going that route. I have treasures that give me great joy and happiness that I spent less than $5 on. So when they break, it's not heartbreaking to me. It's actually exciting because I get to go out and find another treasure to replace it. Because you know what? We set things up in our homes and we look at them and we dust them every week and we don't use them. Linens are a perfect example. How many of you have beautiful linens but you save them for the perfect occasion? I used to do that. Why? I use them. If they get stained, I use them until they fall apart 
or, or I repurpose them for something else, like a rag, whatever. But I use things in my house now. I used to save things, and that's silliness. So use the things that give you great pleasure. Be frugal when things break. Maybe try to repair it. If you can't repair it, maybe you can repurpose it. If you can't repurpose it, toss it. Get it out. Get it out of your clutter. But there's so many different ways we can be frugal in our shopping for food, in our in our shopping for clothing, in in everything. And and learning to live with what we have instead of feeling like we have to have more will give you such a sense of peace when you learn to step into it. The idea that we have to have more is um, society's feed, and that's also where our uh, throwaway society comes from. So when you learn to live a little more frugal, I think you'll be much happier. So guys, that was what God implanted in me today to share with you, and I hope you gained something from it. And I'm going to say a prayer and let you get back to your day. Okay. Papa, I just thank you for this beautiful sunny day, for the sunshine that's drying up our new land so that we can work it over. Thank you for the sunshine that's renewing and for all of our friends and our family. And I ask that you please be with those on our prayer list. Millie and her husband, Joe, and family could use prayers. Joe's grandmother is not doing well and could use some prayers. Pray for Diana and Craig. They are experiencing some health issues and could use some prayers. Please pray for Kelly and Mike and Courtney as they walk out some health issues with Mike. Uh, we praise you for the uh, lowering numbers uh, with his platelets that um, we are seeing and we thank you for your hand in that. And we just ask that you remove and lower his platelet numbers to a healthy level and remove all the medications that he's on and just uh, heal his body. And I just ask that you be with all the rest of those on our prayer list, with Pat Kenny, with uh, his son-in-law Mark as they are healing, and uh, with Mona and Ken as they are uh, walking out some health issues too. Just be with everyone on the prayer list and with Terry Perry as well as he has come to mind. And I just ask that you be with all those out there that need prayer, that have lost loved ones through this COVID-19 and, and just those that are struggling through it. And I just ask that through this situation and all the situations we walk out in our lives, that we learn from it and that we grow from it and that we move forward faithfully forward instead of being stagnant or looking in the rearview mirror. And I just ask that you uh, just be with everyone today, strengthen them, let them feel your peace and your comfort and your love and your mercy and grace on them. And may their eyes be open to the gratitude in their life instead of the negative that they might be walking out or experiencing. And I just ask that you keep everyone safe and healthy until we meet again. And I love you and thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives. I also thank you for the spring that you're going to produce on our property so that we have crystal clear water and a source to create ponds and irrigation for our future animals and garden. And I just thank you for what you're going to do there. And I ask all of this in the holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for your time and your part of this community. It means so much to me to have such a faithful community of amazing people. And it's also amazing to see prayers answered, miracles worked, and, and just God's hand and just his constant presence. So I love you all. I wish you an amazing week. And I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. My prayers are with you all. Love you guys. God bless. <laughs>